There is magnificence within you. Right now, in this very moment, you are perfect in every way imaginable. There has never been another person like you in existence, and there will never be another person like you once you're gone. And even though you're absolutely amazing exactly as you are right now, there is something inside of you that yearns for so much more. Hi, I'm Sam Clear, and I'll be your host for Expansion and Fuller Expression. This is the first episode of this podcast, so I want to take a little time and let you know, first and foremost, why this podcast exists. I also want to let you know why we chose the name Expansion and Fuller Expression. And then lastly, I want to tell you why you should keep on tuning in to this podcast. The old alchemists believed that lead wanted to be gold, that acorns wanted to become oak trees, and that you and I, we want to become the highest versions of ourselves possible. And that is the reason why this podcast exists. Because there is a part of you that wants to be your best and highest self. And something led you here so that you could be encouraged and uplifted on this journey that you've set out for yourself. So just to let you know a little bit about who I am, where I come from, and what my background is and, and how I ended up here talking to you today on this podcast, I want to start from the, I guess, the very beginning of my journey as far as personal development and, you know, this kind of information goes. So I am a licensed life insurance agent. If you can see from the plaques and trophies behind me, I've been licensed and selling life insurance and, you know, I did a pretty good job, I, you know, not to brag or anything, but I figured out how to create consistent success in the life insurance industry as a commission only salesperson. And I got to tell you that that is not an easy feat. In fact, most of the people who get licensed to sell life insurance within their first two years, they're going to be out of the business. Mo in fact, most of the people who get a license for to sell life insurance never actually renew it. So I saw that and I'm going, not going to last you guys in the beginning. I really struggled to try and figure out how to have consistency and you know how to make sales. So one day I was in my manager's office and this is a person who I considered a mentor. It's like a big brother to me almost. He's the one that recruited me and got me into the insurance industry years ago. And I noticed something and, and this is again, just to give you a little more background information. I've been struggling for a few years. In fact, after my first year of full-time insurance sales, I left the business and I went to work for the electric company. But after being at the electric company for three years, I decided it was time to give it another try. I've probably been licensed at this point for maybe seven years, somewhere around that point when I, you know, come to this story that I'm telling you guys about today. And in my manager's office, I noticed a book on his bookshelf. And again, I'm really struggling at this time. But the book had a title that just jumped out at me. And the title was Think and Grow Rich. No, well, actually, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. I did see Think and Grow Rich, but the title that jumped out at me first was The Science of Getting Rich. So when I saw that title, I was like, wow, The Science of Getting Rich? That sounds like something that I should probably know. So I asked if I could borrow that book. And the manager, the, the, the mentor and the person that I was just mentioning said that he was not going to allow me to uh, borrow this book because he had given it out several times. And he, that was his third time buying this book because he never got it back from the people that he lent it to. So I'm like, come on, man, you know, I'm going to give you your book back. You know, I'm really struggling. I feel like this is probably something that can help me. You know, he, this, this title was, you know, amazing. It's really appealing to me. And he's like, yeah, I know. And it was appealing to everybody else and I never got it back. So if you want that book, you're going to have to go ahead and buy it. So literally that day I left the bookstore and I bought that book. Now, just to give you a little bit more background information about, you know, kind of the kind of person that I grew up as when I was a senior in high school, I was in the uh, national honor society and they allowed us to give a quote in the yearbook. And my quote was, I once heard someone say that if you want to keep a secret from a black man to put it in a book. And I don't remember where I heard that or who I heard say that. I know I was really young. I, I want to say it was probably a relative. It may have even been my grandmother. So I, I, I have a, I have a draw blank sometimes, and I can't remember exactly who I heard say that. But when I heard that statement, 
it kind of messed me up because I'm like, man, why would somebody say something like that? And, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I realized that if I wanted to empower myself, if I wanted to, you know, learn the secrets of success, so to speak, then all I needed to do was, you know, get those secrets out of those books. So early on, I knew that that was the key to, you know, figuring out, success, you know, how to, how to get the things in life that you wanted or how to learn the secrets, I should say, that other people knew who were getting ahead. So, you know, again, when I saw the title of that book, The Science of Getting Rich, the first thing I thought was, that sounds like something that your boy needs to know. So I need to go buy this book right now and start figuring out what these secrets are if there is really a science to getting rich. And I got to be honest with you, when I first read that book, it bothered me. And the reason why it bothered me was because it was so different than my background and upbringing. He said that the, that monistic view of the universe was of Hindu origin. So myself being a devout Christian at the time, and you know, I still consider myself a devout Christian, but in those particular days, I felt like, uh, I don't know about this. You know, this, this, this is a little bit different than, than my view of reality and, and my view of existence and what I was taught and what I believed according to, you know, what I had read in the Bible. You know, I'd never, before that day, I'd never even like looked at what the Hindus believed or anything like that. But even though I felt uneasy, I decided that I was going to, you know, keep on just reading the book, at least to see if there was something I could probably get out of it. And I'm so glad that I did, because what I figured out was that, you know, even though I didn't necessarily agree with everything the book said, if I practice and apply the principles that that book contained, those secrets that I was seeking, that I would be able to benefit myself. So from that point forward, I became a voracious reader and that was probably back in, I want to say like 2008. Again, like I got originally licensed to sell life insurance in 2003. So it wasn't seven, eight years, about five, five years into my journey. And again, three of those years. So I did one year before I quit the industry and then I did three more years. So that's the first four years where, you know, the first year and then the three at ComEd. I kept my license going, but I didn't make a lot of sales. I just made, you know, if, if somebody asked me about life insurance, I let them know that I was still licensed. I, I sold a few policies here and there to friends and family and some coworkers. But other than that, I wasn't actively going out selling life insurance. But again, when I quit, so I quit my job at ComEd in 2007. And I really struggled. In fact, the reason why I went to get the job at ComEd is because I was struggling so much and my wife got pregnant. So it, it almost just picked up right where it left off. And now at this point, not only do we have one child, but while I was at ComEd those three years, we had another one. So we have two children at this point. So I'm struggling and, you know, I see this book, then I read the book, and then I start to apply these principles. And those principles literally turn things around for me. So what I did was I started, you know, reading those types of books on a regular basis. And the next one was Think and Grow Rich. And, you know, so I've been, again, reading books like this a lot. So that's my story. And, you know, that's what I want to tell you guys about how it was that I ended up here today. That's the reason why this podcast exists. I'm sorry. That was the first thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So I told that background information from my story to let you all know that, for years now, I felt the need to share some of the things that I've learned. And there's something inside of me that, you know, wants to just naturally help other people who may be a little bit, you know, behind where I am, am at this point. And trust me when I tell you, I still got a long way to go. But I have read well over, I want to say probably like 400 books since 2008 when I read that first book that I was just talking about, The Science of Getting Rich. And just, you know, give you a little bit of disclaimer, half of them are probably audio books. But uh, what I did was I turned my, you know, work and commuting time and even, you know, exercise time into learning time by listening to audio books. So if you don't have an audible subscription or if you don't, you know, go to YouTube or, you know, somewhere where they have recorded books, I definitely recommend that to you. That's an easy way to get, you know, reading the books in is by listening to them. And there's some great audio books out there. But the reason why I'm here in front of this camera right now today is because I want to share what I've learned from all these different books. And my hope is that, you know, if, if this finds you, 
that it helps you on your journey to, to grow into the person that you want to, you know, become. Cause like I said, in my introduction, you know, there's greatness and magnificence within you. And even though you're perfect, exactly as you are, and there's nothing wrong with where you are and who you are. But again, there's something inside of all of us that yearns to be greater. So the reason why this podcast exists is to help bring whatever that thing inside of, of each and every one of us that's yearning for that, you know, more, that, that more, that, that expansion, that fuller expression, again, which is the name of the podcast, want to help that bring that out of you and help you to reach whatever it is that you want to reach, whether that be uh, material goals, um, it could be, you know, health and relationship goals, whatever, you know, we all want to grow in a lot of different areas of our life. So this is kind of, you know, general, uh, even though I will be doing some, you know, specific talks about uh, business, about relationships, about personal development. In fact, as I record this first episode, just to let you know about, you know, my relationship background, I'll be married uh, tomorrow, 21 years. So September 22nd, it, it'll be my 21st anniversary. And I got a wonderful wife. In fact, I was just talking with somebody on the phone I hadn't talked with probably since man, 1998 or something like that. And, uh, my cousin ran into him and, you know, gave the person my phone number. And he was like, I told him that, you know, my anniversary was this week and that I'd be, you know, married 21 years. And he was like, 21 years, how in the world you pull that off? You know, he was like, these women are so difficult. In fact, he said, these black women are so difficult. You know, I go ahead and put that said the way he said it. But the first thing I said was, you know, I can't really relate to that. I got a great wife. You know, I haven't had any problems. That's the fact, you know, why we still together these 21 years. So, you know, again, if, if you're looking to grow your relationship, uh, grow your business, you know, grow in your, you know, whatever your personal development growth goals are, hopefully this will be able to, you know, help you reach those goals a little bit quicker and to give you some encouragement and uplifting and, you know, some, some principles and things that will actually help you on your journey. So, again, that's the reason why this podcast exists. So... The next thing we want to talk about is why the name expansion and fuller expression. So again, you know, I just got finished talking about, uh, how I got into this, you know, journey of personal development by, you know, being by, by my struggles. So, you know, sometimes your struggles will lead you to some places. And uh, again, when I, when I first read those books, just to be honest with you, I was not looking for personal development or personal growth or anything like that. I just wanted to figure out how to consistently make sales of life insurance. So that's what I was looking for. But I got to be honest with you guys. What I found was so much more valuable than just being able to consistently, you know, make life insurance sales. I mean, you know, I've grown so much, you know, since I picked up that first book and, you know, I, again, I got a long way to go, but you know, I've, I've grown by leaps and bounds. In fact, I couldn't even imagine, you know, at that point, when I first picked that book up, you know, being where I am and even, you know, even the fact that I would be here to want to share what I've learned on a podcast, you know, I couldn't even imagine anything like that going back to 2008 when I first, you know, got into this stuff. Um, but again, back to, you know, why we chose the name expansion and fuller expression. So in all my reading, you know, we all have favorites. We have favorite foods. We have favorite TV shows. We have favorite, you know, artists and my thing was reading because again, I, you know, I said, I've read hundreds of books at this point and my favorite author of all times of all those books. And again, the majority of those books were personal development, self-help type books. And of all the ones that I read, there are none that even come close to judge Thomas Troward. So he, he may not be one of the most popular ones. In fact, uh, a lot of people probably haven't even heard of him. But he's my favorite. Um, the depth of his writing is, you know, just beyond, just so far beyond, in my opinion, what a lot of the other writers were doing. You know, again, this is, you'll be going back 100 years. Um, so, of course, you know, his writing, just like everybody else's, you know, sound like the times and everything. But, you know, if you really stop and, and like meditate and break down, you know, what this man was saying even 100 years ago, it was just so rich and it was, it has so much depth to it. So that title um, of this podcast that we're here, you know, talking about today, Expansion and Fuller Expression, it actually comes from, you know, one of his most famous uh, lectures, because his first couple of books were just uh, prints of some lectures that he was going around doing. And this particular lecture was called The Door Lectures on Mental Science. 
and that particular one was written back in uh, 1909. And uh, in fact, I'm going to see if I can recite it from memory because uh, over the years, I'll pull it up just to make sure, you know, if I forget something, I'll have it handy. But over the years, one of the things that I wanted to do was to learn, you know, this particular section of this book verbatim. And, you know, hopefully you'll appreciate it once I kind of go through it and break it down, the reason why I wanted to learn it verbatim. But here it is. I'm going to, you know, see if I can do it from memory. It's, it goes, my mind is a center of divine operation. The divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression. And this means something entirely new, something beyond what is going before, though proceeding out of it by an order, orderly sequence of growth. Therefore, since the divine cannot change its inherent nature, it must operate in the same manner in me. Consequently, in my own special world of which I am the center, it will go forth to produce new conditions always in advance of any that have gone before. So that's where the title expansion and fuller expression came from. So what I want to do is I want to just like go in and break that down because as I was saying it, you know, maybe, maybe it did, maybe it didn't, you know, really strike you the way that it did me years ago when I first heard it, but it's a lot of depth here. So we're going to start with the beginning where he says that my mind is a center of divine operation. So that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory, but you know, we're going to talk about what that means. So what Troward is here saying is that your mind, my mind, every individual on this planet, its mind is a center of divine operation. So what is that? So of course, divine means God. So this is saying that God operates through each and every one of us through our minds. So that's what it means that my mind is a center of divine operation. In fact, imagine a big circle. And then in this circle, there are a lot of individual dots. Well, each one of those individual dots could be likened to an individual mind. So they're all inside of the big circle and each dot is a center of its own world. And that's what Trout is here saying. So that's, that's kind of his picture of what the universe is like. So again, you got God as the, the big circle, and then you got countless, you know, trillions of, maybe not trillions, but you know, billions or how many, I don't know how many people exist in the whole universe, could be trillions, I don't know. But you got, you know, countless dots inside of this big circle, and each one of those is a center of that divine operation. And the reason why Troward is saying this is because all mind is one. That's, you know, what this premise is, you know, coming from. So there's only one mind, which is the mind of God. And the fact that you and I have minds is because God has given us his mind. And therefore, because that's the source of our consciousness, our, you know, the ability to think and to, you know, be creative. That is why your mind is a center of divine operation. The next thing that Trower says is that the divine operation is always for expansion and full expression. And this means a production of something beyond what has gone before, something entirely new, not included in past experience. So let's deal with that one. So he's saying that our minds are, of course, as we just dealt with centers of divine operation. And now he's telling us what the divine operation is. He says that the divine operation wants to expand. It wants to grow. It wants to express itself more fully. So one of the first things that I said, you know, when I was talking about the old alchemists was that they believed and they taught, you know, to their apprentices and things like that, that lead wants to become gold, that an uh, acorn wants to turn into an oak tree and that you and I, you know, want to grow into something bigger and, and higher. And that's the same thing that Trout is here saying. He's saying that the reason why you have that yearning inside of you to be something more is because that's the divine inside of you seeking expansion and fuller expression, because that's what the life principle does. The life principle wants to live. It wants to experience the livingness of its life. It wants more things to go through. It wants 
It wants to be more, wants to do more, wants to have more. It wants to express itself fully. So the reason why, again, we're here talking about this today is because there's something inside of us that yearns for more. And then what he tells us next is that whatever this more is, this, this uh, divine expansion that seeks to, you know, through you and me to, you know, be and have more, it tells us that this is the production of something what is beyond what is going before, something entirely new. So the divine has existed again through every person that's existed, but it has never existed as me. It has never existed as you. This is something entirely new, this experience for the divine to be here living, you know, seeing through your eyes and, and experiencing things through your life. And that's what Trout is saying right here. So it's seeking something entirely new, not included in past experience. But this, but it says next to it, it proceeds out of past experience by an orderly sequence of growth. So what are your goals? What are your dreams? What are your aspirations? Whatever those are, that's the divine seeking to express itself fully through you. And it's go it can only do that through you. It can't do it through me. It can't do it through your cousin or your mother or anybody else. Whatever your goals are, whatever your aspirations are and, and your yearning for, for Morius, you're the only person that can express whatever that is. So if you're yearning to write a book, that book cannot be written by anybody else. If you're an artist and you, you have some paintings in your mind and you haven't yet put them on a canvas, again, that can only come through you. So it's really important that you make sure that you express yourself fully because that's the whole purpose of life. And then what he says next is that this growth takes place by, I'm sorry, this, this expansion takes place by an orderly sequence of growth. So that's the whole purpose of life. That's the whole point of, you know, why you and I are here because we want to grow into something more to something higher. And the next thing that Trauber says is that therefore, since the divine cannot change its inherent nature, it must operate in the same manner in me. So again, that life principle seeking expansion can't change. That's the reason why everybody has aspirations. Not everybody for the most part, most people have aspirations to, to do be and have more things than what they do. And again, it's natural because what he's saying is that the divine cannot change its inherent nature. Just like the, the acorn wants to become that oak tree. You know, we naturally want to grow into the fullest and highest version of whatever it is that, that, that we can be and only we can be. So the next thing he says is that consequently in my own special world, of which I am the sensor, it will move forward to produce new conditions always in, in advance of any that have gone before. So this is letting us know that in your own world, again, of which you are the center, the divine operation is actually going to create the things and the conditions that will help you to grow into whatever that highest and best version of yourself is. And at this point, I want to kind of compare it to, you know, planting an actual seed into the ground. If you planted an acorn in the ground and that acorn, if you cut that seed open, you're not going to find an oak tree anywhere in there. So how does that acorn become an oak tree? Well, it has the blueprint of an oak tree inside of it. But again, you're not going to find the actual tree. But when you plant that tree, I'm sorry, that acorn, that seed into the soil, it attracts everything to itself that it needs for its growth from its environment. So if it needs zinc and there's zinc in the earth, it's going to attract zinc to itself. Of course, it needs water. When the, when the soil gets wet, it's going to extract the moisture from the soil and, you know, use that to grow. If it needs, I don't know what an acorn needs. I'm not a scientist or anything like that, but whatever it needs, it knows it. And when I say it knows it, it, it knows it because the divine blueprint of what an acorn needs to grow is inside of it. And again, it's going to attract it from its environment. And that's the exact same way that you and I grow. We attract what we need into our environment. 
So hopefully if this found you, this was a little small piece of something that you need for your own growth. You know, maybe you needed to hear, you know, some of the words that, that were said today, that's going to help you on your journey. And, you know, maybe as we, you know, go forward, you're going to attract even more things, but everything that we need, we're, we have it within us to attract it to ourselves. So that's the reason why I chose this title expansion, full expression. Um, that quote is again, in my opinion, you know, one of some of the, the best reading that I'd done on this journey, because I felt like it kind of encapsulated, you know, this whole process that I felt like I was on as far as personal growth and personal development was concerned. You know, I, I realized that it was something inside of me that was, you know, kind of pushing me down this path even though that's not what I was looking for. Again, I was just trying to figure out how to make some sales. You know, I wanted to make some money, take care of my family. But what I found was so much more valuable. And hopefully, you know, again, if this has found you, you know, you're on that same journey and, you know, you're going to find what's inside of you. Because again, that's the whole point of this whole thing is to, you know, to, to come to the realization of who you are and where you are and how this, why you're here going through this whole process. And again, you know, in that quote, he kind of broke all that down. He, he said who you are. He said that your mind is the center of divine operation. So that means that you're the divine. The divine hid itself inside of you, hoping that one day you would find it. So if you did know that, congratulations. If you didn't know that, then hopefully you learned something new today. And that divine presence inside of you is ready to start growing, just like that acorn that's ready to start growing into that oak tree. You know, whatever your vision is, whatever it is that you're hoping to accomplish with, with this life that you've been given, again, that's that was given to you. So, you know, that divine operation is going to help you to attract whatever it is that you need on your journey for your growth. And sometimes, I gotta, I gotta tell you this too, sometimes what you need is not what you want. And sometimes what you need may even be considered negative, you know, from the, the positive negative, you know, again, there is really no negative, but from the positive, you know, this is good, this is bad. Sometimes at the time, the things happen to, happening to you may actually seem like they're, you know, doing you harm and detriment, but it's not until you get past it and go down the road that you realize that that very thing that you hated, the obstacles, the, the you know, hardships, the pits, those were the most important parts of your growth and your personal development. And then you'll look and see exactly how all those things led you to become that person that you intended to become. So that's the reason why we chose that title and, you know, expansion and full expression is all about, you know, being here. This podcast is all about giving you a platform or not a platform, but um, a resource where you can come and get encouragement and, you know, um, fuel and food and, you know, things that are going to help you uh, grow into that higher, highest and best version of yourself. All right. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is why you should keep tuning in. Whoever you are and whoever you're becoming, you're going to need support, reminders, help, and insight as you're going down that road. So the reason why we're here is because we want to, we want to help you dive deep and, you know, get those tools that you need that are necessary for your own personal growth. And again, I don't know what you need. I don't even know what I need, but something inside of me told me to, that it was time for me to finally sit down and record this. And I've been thinking about doing this for a long time, but you know, I just always, I kept putting it off and putting it off. But today I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and record this first episode. And let me just apologize because I'm sure that the quality of this is nowhere near, you know, what you may be used to. And maybe it's, you know, not even what it's going to be once I kind of get this thing figured out, but I just want to kind of, you know, sit down today, record this message, let you know, you know, a little bit about who I am and why I'm here. And again, I'm here to try to help you on your journey of expansion and growth and to becoming the highest and best version of yourself. So over the course of this podcast, we're going to do some, uh, you know, deep diving into some great works. Um, authors like Thomas Troward, 
Uh, Charles Hanel is another good one, wrote the Master Key System. That book helped me so much. Um, Napoleon Hill, of course, Wallace Waddles, you know, some even some new authors too. But I always love the classics. Those were, you know, my personal favorites. I've read many of those books, you know, 10 times each because I just got so much out of my every so often go back through and read them again. And um, we're also going to do some interviews. We're going to have um, people who are maybe a little bit further along their journeys that can offer some insight into, you know, how they how they grew and expanded and, you know, the things that, you know, again, hindsight being 2020, when they look back, you know, some of the things that, you know, helped them get where they are. And those very same things that, again, maybe not, may not seem that great could be some of the things that you could be going through right now. And then again, this is going to offer you some encouragement to just keep moving forward and keep going because you're on the right track and you're attracting everything that you need into your life for your personal growth. And um, lastly, you know, we're going to just, you know, tune in uh, from time to time so that, uh, you know, again, just to get, get like a shot in the arm because, you know, a lot of this stuff, like I said, I've read these books. I've read a lot of them over and over. So this is just another tool to help you in your growth and personal development. So again, my name is Sam Clear. Thank you so much for, if you listen to this whole thing, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule because you could have chose to do anything else with your time, but you decide to spend it here and, you know, listen to these words. So again, this is just the first of hopefully, you know, a lot more episodes to come. And, you know, um, I, I appreciate you bearing with me because I'm sure it was a little bit unbearable, you know, me trying to figure this thing out. But I promise you, I'll, I'll continue to, you know, do do research and study and try to get better with podcasting because it's like anything else riding a bike. You know, when you do something for the first time, it's probably not going to be the best. But, you know, the more you do anything in life, that's how we're designed, the better we get at it. So hopefully my energy was OK. You know, hopefully you got something out of the words that I had to say today. And if not, I understand that, too. You know, I know my message may not be for everybody, but hopefully it touches something inside of you that's ready to expand and express yourself more fully. And if it did, keep coming back, keep tuning in, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm not sure how you get your podcast, but wherever podcasts are available, keep checking me out. Peace.